行的The perfect start to a late afternoon's fishing. A wildly long and slender in form, mahogany and burnt butter in colour. They're not the largest of carp, but have a feel of the ancient. Today, Dan fishes alone in the grounds of a castle steeped in history. The stocking of the fish unknown, another mystery lost over time and neglect. Dan soon spots some fish moving among the lilies, rocking the pads as they roam through the underwater jungle of stems. An old bit cane spinning rod, a centre pin reel, a single hook and a piece of bread are all that is needed. It's a simple approach that allows him freedom to roam from swim to swim to stalk individual fish.
In the spring, Dan contacted the Benedictine nuns of Minster Abbey on the Isle of Thanet. In early summer, Dan was invited by Sister Wahlberger to look around the grounds and to investigate the last remaining pond. Sister Wahlberger talks about the history of the Abbey, spanning 1,300 years, and its ties with King Canute and the Benedictine monks of St. Augustine's Abbey, Canterbury. Her enthusiasm for the history of the Abbey is captivating. Dan hangs on every word as she talks about the buildings of the last remaining pond. The more Dan hears, the more confident he is that an old strain of carp might be present. For the sisters, the pond is a place of contemplation. She shares with Dan the wonder of it, how it's been left to nature, something that Dan is very keen to hear. A neglected pond might provide a chance encounter with a forgotten wildie. A feeding carp. Dan is quick to cast his line, and for a moment he's attached to a lightning bolt that soon shakes off the hook. A mirror carp. Dan wasn't expecting this. A strain resulting from fish cultivation, practice that in Europe goes back to the Romans and possibly beyond. Dan's mirror has some of the features of a wild carp, but in a modern dress. It may seem confusing, but the species genetics are far from straightforward. In fact, some question whether there are any true wild carp left in the British Isles. From an old map, Dan has found a pond that he believes may hold wildies and has been given permission to fish it. 
A path from the manor house takes Dan deep into a valley, a contrast from the flint walls and spires of Minster Abbey. Soon the winding path takes him to a clearing and a shrouded pool. Fallen trees and neglect, the pool looks promising. Dan casts among the sunken branches. There's an almost haunting, ghostly atmosphere to the lake. The environment seems to be hanging in the balance, a fragility between life and death. Despite many attempts, Dan cannot persuade a carp to take a bait from the surface. He feels the only way to hook one of these elusive fish is to stalk one among the lily pads at the far end of the pond. Quietly, and slowly, he creeps around the pool, trying to spot a fish that may be close in. He spots a carp among the safe haven of lilies and lowers a hook bait close to a wary fish. It's taken immediately, much to the surprise of the angler and the cameraman. Dan tries to keep the fish from diving deep, and after a few screams from the center pin, a fish is netted. A wildy, beautifully dark in coloration and sleek in appearance, a carp more familiar to the nobility of old. Dan takes one more look before it's released back into the water. An eerie stillness settles over the pool. No more fish are to be seen or heard. The place, it seems, has become lifeless. Dan has heard whispers of one more pond. He is a treasure seeker addicted, and with just a few hours of light left, Dan heads off, further back in time.